to the Kent Lap Podcast. I guess I'm kind of curious, you know, you are um, you're 40, you have teenage kids, you're a pastor to church, you're in Nashville, Tennessee, it's 2020, there's COVID going on, there's political unrest and tension, every, like with everything going on, where do you see, like, where do you, if you're concerned, if you have any areas of concern for the state of the church, where are those areas of concern? Biblical literacy. Hmm. Um, illiteracy. Um, people not reading their Bibles. Christians um, getting spoon-fed through podcasts. Um, following their favorite preachers, but not their pastor. Mm. Um, not reading the Bible, expecting theology to come through song only and not through the Word, um, or through sermon only and not through the Word. You know, it's kind of like the same thing as diet and exercise. You know, it's like I want to be able to eat whatever I want and walk into a gym and walk back out and be healthier. I don't want to put in the work. I don't want to limit my diet. I want it to be easy. And, you know, there, but there's a, there's a discipline to being healthy. There's a discipline to being spiritually healthy. And, and it's sad, and it really makes me concerned to think that you have to convince Christians to read the Bible. Uh, by definition, I think a Christian is one who longs for the pages of Scripture. But I think that we have so reduced for fear of legalism, maybe, or moralism. We've reduced the Christian life to a five-minute devotion for God, devotion with God that you can get at the local bookstore, the ones that are still open. Um, or just show up to church on Sunday and give money, and you're assumed to be healthy. Um, if you ate one meal a week, even if it was loaded with nutrition, you're not going to be healthy, even if a sermon alone can produce health. Um, I, there's absolutely the greatest, the greatest issue facing the church today is Christ, professing Christians not being s- students and readers of Scripture. But more than that, probably, the greater issue, even beyond that, is why that's the case. Like, what's going on in their hearts? I don't... The answer isn't just for people to start reading their Bible more, necessarily. It's addressing the heart issue of why is it that you aren't a student of Scripture? Um, why is it that it's been months or years since you've read the, you know, read the Bible more than two or three weeks in a row? Um, that would be a serious problem if we looked at physical food consumption like we do spiritual food consumption. Uh, we would be really concerned. We would call it a disorder. You have an eating disorder. Uh, but in the church, you know, we don't, doesn't really get brought up much. Mm-hmm. Um, so beyond, I mean, and that's, and that's been what's so hard with all the issues that we face in 2020, um, from the social injustice and race tension and processing COVID and the division that we're so polarized politically. Um, you know, the, the tornadoes and Kobe dying, my Paul dying, like um, Regis Philbin, like on and on. It's like, this has been Bob Gibson, old pitcher for the Cardinals. This has been crazy, man. Like th- this year is just, and I hate to use the term, <laughs> but it's going to be permanent. It's going to be made permanent to 2020 is unprecedented, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, but all of the heartache that flows from those issues and many of those issues themselves Addressing them only is trying to change the type of tree you have by simply knocking the fruit off the tree. You've got to go to the root. You've got to go to the, the root of the issue. Um, weed killer that you use, um, whether it be Roundup or whatever. Um, you don't want something that just kills the leaf. You know, if you look on it in big letters, other than this causes cancer, you'll see. Uh, this goes to the root, kills the root, right? That's, that's what we're after when we're trying to get rid of poison ivy. Um, the root issue of so much of this unrest that we've had this year, uh, the root issue is a lack of discipleship, a lack of mission, 
a lack of evangelism, um, a lack of faith in God, and all of that comes back to God's people not caring what God says and not being students of his word. That's an issue. You go back there, you start addressing, that's a systemic issue. Mm -hmm. When people begin to be students of scripture and believe the gospel, process, believe, preach the gospel to themselves, share the gospel with others, that, like, Racial rec- reconciliation happens a lot faster and a mm-hmm. lot more whole when that is a part of the answer to social injustice, racial tension, and hatred. Like, that's how you're going to see the change. And you, I don't think you're going to see it through government, politics, money. I don't think you're going to see it through any other way. Um, I do think education is a significant part that needs to be addressed in um, the division within race in I all of our that. cities. Yeah. Um, lack of knowledge and why that's the case. Um, but man, yeah, sorry to kind of go off on that soapbox as much as I did, but I, I, that, it's, it's, it's horrific, the amount of pastors. It's terrifying, the amount of pastors that I talk to personally. And I know that you could take that as a poll for the rest of the pastors in America, how few pastors read the Bible. It's deeply troubling. Hmm. And if the pastor doesn't read the Bible, if the pastor doesn't pray, I mean, uh, go, remember the Titans line, um, attitude reflects leadership, Captain, right? Mm-hmm. When Gary Bashir said that back to Julius, the black linebacker um, in that movie with uh, Denzel Washington. Um, you know, the people, uh, they, the parishioners follow the pastor, the sheep follow the shepherd. Um, and so when our shepherds become men of prayer and men of God's word, hungry for his word, devoted to his word, whether they like it that day or not, whether it moves them or not, but they're just, they're in it. They're being, they're dedicated their life. This is good for me. When they have that mentality that trickles down and it begins to shape and inform the whole church. And if all our churches are being shaped that way, man, that addresses so many other issues. Mm -hmm. Um, Otherwise we're just asking them to pretend to, to, to live in such a way that it's as if they were reading the Bible. So I want you to give financially. I want you to serve. I want you to share with others the gospel. I want you to go do these things. And it, that's having them act without this, the humble disposition to God's word, asking him to speak to them through this time, being students. It doesn't take writing out, you know, for four hours of devotional. Giving your time, it's, it needs to be systematic, um, but systematic time in Scripture that might cost you some things. And, you know, so sacrificial, meaning you might need to go to bed earlier, get up earlier, but something that costs you something. Sacrificial, systematic, um, and I think along the way you will experience joy. You know, like since January first, two thousand fourteen. Um, I've read through the Bible each year, and before that, I never, I only would, I was sporadic, you know, hit and miss, much more miss than hit. Um, but I've, I've learned along the way to like the Bible. And I don't know that a lot of our people have been challenged to persevere with it until they like it. First time I had bourbon, I didn't like it. It was strange. Um, first time I had black coffee, I didn't like it. It was strange. First time you have black tea, if you're from the South, it's really strange. Or uh, uh, unsweetened tea. Um, you don't like it. It's strange. But you can persist with something long enough to enjoy it. You said something earlier about acquiring a taste for something. I forget what we were talking about. But you acquired a taste for... Kombucha. Kombucha. Um, you know, some people, like I remember all my pastor buddies talking about IPAs, double IPAs and all that stuff. And I drank it. I felt like I was eating wildflowers. You know, it's awful. But then I just, I was like, you know what? I don't like missing out. I like being a part of the group. And uh, you know what? I'm going to forget the ultra. And I'm going to go for a, I'm going to go for a double IPA. And so what I did is I started asking um, the, the server, like, will you give me the most repulsive <laughs> and violent <laughs> IPA that you have. Like, I want it. I, I want it to like make me sick. If you can just give me the the most repulsive, aggressive, you know, all these adjectives. And I 
and I began to develop a palate and a taste for it. Now it's my preferred. It's like everything else tastes like a LaCroix, you know, mm. uh, like a bubbly, you yeah, know, sparkling water. Um, and I, I appreciate it now. But I think a lot of people, if it's not like fireworks and fantasy and um, uh, warm and fuzzy every day, they just, uh, they don't develop and, and develop the palate. Mm-hmm. They don't stick with it long enough to find joy there. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, it's yep. like if, it would be great if we started riding a bike the first time we touched a bike. But it took scab knees, took tears, running in the ditches. I always aim for the bushes. It was the most forgiving thing in our yard um, to crash into. Usually kept the bike upright for me to step off of it yeah. instead of the pavement. But man, there was something about wanting to learn how to ride that bike that kept you coming back, mm-hmm. even with blood dripping down to your sock. Mm-hmm. You just wanted to ride it. And I feel like our people, they're, not, they're expecting to develop a palate from the very beginning. And if, it ever gets, if they ever get a bad taste of it at all, uh, one, if it seems boring. Two, if it asks them to do something that they don't want to do. Mm-hmm. Or they, they disagree with it because culture says something different. They're off. They're, yeah. they're, they don't touch anymore. And yeah. It's like, oh, man. It, it's so much fun to ride bikes with your friends. Mm-hmm. It's so much fun to know the God who created everything. Mm-hmm. If you just take time and, and commit that. Um, so that, I think, by far is, is the greatest. As a pastor, as a Christian, as a daddy, even wanting to see these things in my kids' lives. If my kids are reading the Bible every day, there's a lot I don't have to worry about. But that's a big concern if they're not. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I feel like a lot flows from that. Yeah. Uh, but that's by far the biggest issue, I think, facing us as Christians, mm-hmm. facing us as, um, as pastors and yeah. people. Yep. I don't think I'm going to be able to add to that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think that's probably a good a big soapbox. That's pretty good conclusion right there.